What's up guys, Max here and welcome back to my dungeon. Tonight uh, I have here uh, the ASUS uh, Tooth Tough or whatever the name is, uh, B550M uh, Gaming. So it's a uh, motherboard testing night and uh, I'm going to test it with the 11th generation uh, Core i5, the 11600K uh, and the kit of Flare X uh, 3200 MHz C14. So it will be pro mainly tested at uh, Gear 1 since it's the is the most efficient way to run the memory and then i will try to push hard the vram and see the temperature and stuff like that so i'm going uh, through the bios settings so everything that is relevant that uh, for you to know if you buy this motherboard how to tune it uh, and well all the important stuff you can find in the bios we will go through today and uh, well some practical stuff i don't want to uh, talk too much about the feature, the ports, uh, you know that already. So, and you can read it uh, in every uh, website or, uh, or you know, review. What I'm going to do today is just about testing practically the board, see the limits uh, and see the important feature that you have in the BIOS that is useful for a, a good tune and a good setup. So, without any further ado, let's start testing. Okay, so here we have... Um, uh, 1650 Super that we can try with some games. Uh, the kit of Flare X, uh, the 11600K thermal paste. Let's see what we have here in the box. I mean, the main reason that I bought this uh, motherboard is just to find one of the cheapest motherboards that have a good aesthetics and enough features to be able to uh, serve as a basic. Uh, uh, gaming PC, so I, I'm not looking for uh, all the package of uh, features and you know extra stuff. It's just the basic to be able to build a decent gaming PC with, let's say, the essential features. So here's the board. Uh, okay, see we have an M2 slot here. A second M2 slot here, and uh, well, pretty simple board. The VRAM section, I think, is uh, an 8 plus 2, that is more than enough in theory. But we will check that later with uh, a thermal probe inside. We will see if it is going to throttle or not. Four slot dim, pretty much it. Okay, so what do we have more in the box? SATA cable, NVMe screws, important, pad, thermal pad, okay, well, let's keep the boring part and let's assemble this thing, alright, I'm up and running and now we're going to see what the BIOS can offer, okay, so this is the BIOS uh, as uh, you enter for the first time, uh, pretty normal, but except this, the BIOS version is like ancient. So the first thing that we need to do is to update the BIOS. But I mean like right now. To update the BIOS is pretty easy. So F7, advanced, tool, ASUS, AZ flash, select the USB drive, the BIOS, make sure that is for the right version because there's also the Wi-Fi version. Click the file, yes. Okay, and just wait a bit. All right, now that we are up to date with the latest BIOS version, it's time to check uh, what we have here. So F7, and just take a look uh, to the advanced uh, menu. Uh, well, first, there's one thing that is important, is the resizable bar control here, that may be useful, but uh, we will check that uh, in another time, another video probably. So, um, okay, here we have all basic stuff, uh, IE tweaker, well, usually, the average people do is like load the XMP profile, save and you know set and forget. Uh, now what I'm going to do is go a bit over the BIOS, then try the XMP profile, and then we do memory tuning. We see want to see the limit and if we can easily uh, have a good tune on the memory, and then we do other tests. But usually what you need to do is to set XMP first. Is of course timing control for the memory so it seems that uh, yeah we have pretty much everything we need the vrm so level 3 is a good default 
so we have already good limits so it should be necessary to tweak that to have a good uh, at default performance voltage okay the xmp is correct 1.35 VCC I.O. is for tuning the memory, system agent as well. Okay, I think we have everything we need to do uh, a basic overclock, even an advanced overclock. So, here you may need uh, to know this one. So, this is like where the shortcut was. So, the resizable bar here is just this uh, menu. So. Here we have uh, above 4G decoding enabled by default and resizable bar support disabled. But yeah, this is a topic for another video. And well, usual system configuration things. I don't want to go that in the details since you don't really need that. Uh, voltage mo monitor, well, fan speed. But uh, well, in the ASUS BIOS, just click F6 uh, and you can tune the fan curve, and this is very helpful. Okay, then uh, we have the boot. Okay, nothing weird here. Most important thing is this one, the profile. So we have eight profile as by default for ASUS, and that is very important when you do tuning. Okay, seven exit and usual stuff. So this is basically what you need to, to know. You have the profile to save the BIOS uh, settings. That is very important for the tuning the monitor stuff, uh, QFAN configuration and so on and so forth, the basic stuff, every motherboard have it, and uh, a decent uh, uh, tweak uh, page for the VRM, load level calibration and timing control for the memory. This is basically what you need to, to do for um, a budget gaming rig to tune it perfectly. Uh, so we have all the basic control that we need. So now that I have loaded the XMP profile, I'm going to do a boot in windows and i try to play some games or do some stuff and then set a base uh, score let's say a, ba a baseline uh, performance and then we tune the memory the first thing that i see here is that uh, when i load xmp profile the motherboard goes automatically in gear one mode at uh, 3200 megahertz c14 and this is nice since um, we have a 52 nanosecond of latency and it's good. I mean, we can improve that by tuning the timings and sub timings and everything, but uh, not every motherboard goes to gear one mode. So this is nice. And uh, now uh, I'm going to check uh, briefly uh, with a stress test uh, the VRM since I have a thermal probe inside the chokes. As you can see here, we have a thermal probe that is connected between two inductors or two chokes is just in between that. Uh, I cannot get directly into the VRM themselves, but we have a probe here, so it's just behind the two chokes. So we are at 1030 degrees, the system is not loaded. Now what I'm going to do is to run a stress test. So I'm going to run, oh, come on. I'm going to run this one stability test with FPU that it usually generates a lot of heat and see the behavior of uh, our VRM section. Let's use also this one. Well, it seems that uh, this is the CPU goes really hot and I'm with an AO. But sometimes it broke so I don't really like this AO, I will check that later. But what I'm going to do now is just to see if the VRM have some kind of issue. And probably if I open Intel Extreme Tuning Utility, I will have a problem that, uh, yeah, thermal throttling, yes. So we are throttling. I don't know if it's the cooler, cooler that is bad. I know sometimes it doesn't work properly, but now I'm going to check it. Um, also because if uh, we don't have the CPU running properly, I cannot get a proper reading on the VRM. Okay, so for this test, I'm going to run the AO cooler at maximum speed. It's a bit noisy, but um, well, I want to see the VRM if it's holding or not. 
So I started the test and yet we have a crazy high temperature but this time no, we are throttling again. First test I want to do is uh, World of Warcraft because if you don't know this is a very CPU bound uh, game and today we are not going to talk about uh, GPU at all. Uh, I know it's a hard topic and if you want to buy uh, to build a budget build, uh, well uh, this uh, 1650 Super probably is the only one that if you are lucky you can find at a decent price because it's less than 4 gigabytes, so it's 4 gigabytes that is not so useful for mining. And before we go, I have to tell you that this is an error because uh, here, as you can see, we are gear one mode, 3200 mega C14. So this is not correct. Anyway, uh, so this is the system just with XMP profile enabled. We am using a kit of G-Skill Flare X 3200 mega C14, which is a good BDI kit. And you can, fi you can find it for a reasonable amount of money. I think like 100 and something or even less if you're lucky. So this is a very nice kit for uh, 11th generation because uh, you can really tune this uh, memory even with the 11900K up to even 4 GHz but with gear 1 most likely you have like uh, uh, 300 and uh, 3300, 33 MHz uh, and then with the core i9 like uh, 3700, 33 megahertz. So with this kit you can do like C14 with all the speed you want in gear 1. So, uh, but let's get back to the test. So here as you can see we are pretty much GPU limited. We have a good FPS but we are GPU limited. So for this test I'm going to lower all the details that have an impact at the GPU level. So I'm going to leave this here because they, are, they have an impact also in the CPU and I don't want that so I want to run the game with the maximum impact on the CPU that I can so I lower all the GPU related uh, stuff and now we are still a bit uh, GPU constrained but well not too much and it's a good realistic test uh, to see when we are going to tune the memory if it's worth it or not because if you build a budget gaming PC you will probably not running a high-end uh, GPU and maybe you can spare your effort to tune further the system and spend hours tuning the memory, the, C the, the CPU, because you are GPU limited. But anyway, so the first test. So now we are going to set the base to see the average and the minimum FPS. This is really important. So let's start the test. And here you can see the frame rate average the 1% low and 0.1% low. What we need to know now is the average and the 1% low because in this game the average is what usually you see in the counter here and if you have an error refresh rate monitor is what you see uh, most of the time. Then the 1% low is when you have a particularly difficult situation like a world boss or something really intense and you don't want that to go below a certain range or you will perceive like stuttering and that, that, that kind of stuff that we all not want when we game. So far it seems doing good. Again, the CPU is still, uh, the GPU is still uh, pushing really hard. So we are GPU limited. It means uh, that is a good thing because uh, if we have low detail and still we are GPU limited, it means that the CPU is doing really a wonderful job because we are pushing even a low detail all the FPS uh, we can. Okay, let's keep this as reference. So 224, 154. Another reference point that I want to pick is uh, the uh, Oribos uh, uh, landing zone and uh, if you are not practical with this game, this is really taxing for the CPU. And here usually is not easy to go below 130, uh, to go above, sorry, 130. And this means that even with this XMP profile, like uh, one click set and forget tuning, we are able to have a really nice performance and push uh, the GPU mostly at uh, the limit. Uh, keep in mind that I'm using low details. So really we are pushing all the FPS uh, we can have 
So honestly, if you want to do a gaming setup uh, like this, uh, with this uh, CPU and this kit of memory and this motherboard, you can just really set, F, uh, set the XMP profile and enjoy your new build. But uh, what we're going to do now is to push the memory. So now we are starting to set the memory and then we can go to the VRM testing or something like that. So I'm going to push the memory to the same testing game, see what we have gained. All right, it's like 10 minutes that I'm running FPU stress test. So I'm generating a lot of heat, a lot of uh, current draw, and the VRM uh, are like at 60 degrees in the choke area. So keep in mind that with this board, you cannot overclock the CPU. You can overclock only the memory. And uh, with uh, this i5 uh, 11600K running at default, uh, we do not draw too much current. So the VRM stays uh, really cool so even if you have the bad idea to put the i9 probably the vrm will do will do just fine since you cannot overclock that cpu and well it is not ideal to run an i9 with a board like this because you miss a lot of cache overclocking and you miss a lot of performance as well as the core so uh, this uh, specific cpu will be okay or even the non-k version uh, with this motherboard to make a balanced balanced uh, build because if you want performance you go with a z590 anyway so the vrm seems holding pretty fine as you can see here we i was able to have a good tuning on the memory and actually we have 3600 megahertz uh, c14 with very tight uh, sub timings and the gear one mod that you cannot select gear one gear two in the bios it's a bit weird but anyway uh, it goes in default uh, in gear one mod and actually is a bit better than the MSI Z590i Unify. I prefer is, is a bad BIOS on that board, but I was stuck at uh, um, 3,333 MHz uh, for Gear 1 mode in that board with this CPU. So I was actually able to put uh, two steps of memory overclocking with this chip board that is better than the other one. But anyway, probably the Unify have a really uh, bad bios right now anyway so i was able to do a really great tuning uh, on the memory for the price point of the board and that's very important because we gain like uh, four nanoseconds of latency and a lot in memory write read and copy so uh, memory wise uh, this is a good board uh, cheap for the price but really capable and even the menu of the the memory overclocking you can do stuff uh, really hardcore if you want to go really down into memory overclocking. So, well, uh, so far so good. VRM are okay, memory tuning are okay. And now let's check the real world performance, how many FPS we gain from this tuning. Okay, so in this zone, we didn't gain much, like uh, 10 FPS sometimes, uh, or 20 FPS when we are not uh, GPU limited. But still, 100 and something, 150, 200, is nice i think i can max out this graphics card uh, pretty easily and uh, yes uh, with everything on low so uh, you will probably be a gpu bottlenecked before uh, the cpu is bottlenecked as you can see here you have 50 percent so 60 70 so we didn't gain much uh, in this uh, specific area so now i'm going to test uh, the area when I did the test before and we can compare the results. Okay, so I'm going to start the test uh, as I did before and see if we have gained uh, something. So probably uh, the gain will not be too much because we are heavily uh, GPU limited but it seems that uh, I see that this is more toward like 99. So we are really pushing this uh, 1650 Super at uh, the limit. Because before I, I think it was um, lower, the utilization. And if you watch here, sometimes you have 88. So uh, the, the CPU is still important, of course maybe you don't need all these FPS and if you run on 144 or 165 display it will probably be better to use VSync or a frame limiter so you will not need uh, the CPU tuned like this it's like useless because you always want to to cap your monitor refresh rate but not goes 
above like that or maybe if you are looking for lower input lag but well that is choice of preference i prefer to to stick with my maximum fp maximum refresh of my display so the test is almost done so okay well uh, it was uh, 224 and uh, 154 fps uh, one percent loss all right so as we have seen if you have a, a middle range uh, low middle range uh, gpu you don't really need to tune the system like this but this is something useful that uh, you may need uh, if you want to, to use uh, this motherboard cpu in combination with a powerful uh, gpu like the 3060 3060 ti or well above and i'm going to do that test uh, in another video so i'm going to put a uh, definitely much better uh, gpu and see if uh, with the, the stock uh, configuration like xmp to the uh, fully tuned uh, configuration what is the gain and then i will compare that result uh, with the z590 board uh, that uh, can allow us uh, to overclock also the cpu so you can decide if it's worth uh, to uh, purchase a better motherboard so a higher tire motherboard to overclock the cpu and the cache and that is a very important aspect because if you have uh, a certain gpu or if you play the games that are more uh, reliant on the gpu you may not need to buy an expensive board to spend time in overclocking your cpu because you're already gpu limited or just the cpu doesn't really matter and you have enough performance to spare you the time in tuning and stress testing making sure that the system is stable and so on so yes this will be my next uh, topic when i test again this uh, this board so this board in comparison with uh, a higher end board uh, cpu overclock versus cpu at default uh, but memory tuning is always helpful in everything so uh, my suggestion is even if you don't really need it but uh, you want to learn something new uh, follow my guide because i made a lot and i will keep make a, a tutorial about ram overclocking because uh, setting the system i think is something that uh, is good to know because you would never know if you are if you have the chance to buy a big gpu for msrp uh, I, I wish you that you can do that so in conclusion regarding this specific board my opinion is very positive uh, so the memory overclocking was really great uh, the parameters was all there so you can do even hardcore memory overclocking with this board the only thing that I noticed that I didn't like much is the boot that seems a bit slow. It takes a lot of time. Uh, okay, I was tuning memory, so the, the, the motherboard have to train the new memory settings. and But sometimes it took like 30 seconds or one minute. I didn't like the way uh, they make uh, the, the board uh, boot that is, in my opinion, a bit slow. Another thing that I noticed that uh, I wasn't really uh, happy about that, that... Uh, if you leave the uh, default voltage, so set in auto, the board can shoot uh, also 1.5 or 1.6. Uh, and uh, well, you will get a really high temperature. So to solve that, I had to manually uh, set the voltage to 1.35 or, or well, depends on your luck on the CPU, you can set even lower. This is something that I hope that it will fix with the BIOS update because well, it's just not safe and doesn't really make sense to push all the voltage for a CPU that cannot even be overclocked. Just keep in mind that, but uh, for the rest, uh, I think that this board is pretty nice. So yeah, definitely I can recommend uh, this board, especially if you're going to be uh, in a budget uh, gaming build. Anyway, uh, let me know in the comment section what you think about. I try to do the best to answer it, but if you want to contact me directly, I suggest you to use my Discord. It's full of great people and we have fun and we discuss about this uh, madness. So. All right, for today is everything. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video if you like it, and see you in the next one.